I wanted to talk about the top three whitetail screening plantings that you can plant on your property. And there's a few honorable mentions in there, and we'll mention those at the end. But um, we're right here, right on top of some of these screenings. And now you might want to screen your food plots, but you definitely need to screen your access. In this case, we have big food plots by our house, but we want to screen our house just for privacy. And so we're using a few different combinations. Partly we have a hill. So a lot of times from the road out here, you're just seeing the top of our home. So it doesn't take much to even block our home in some locations, six, eight feet of growth. And, um, and then also uh, block from our low areas too, any kind of movement around the house and what we're doing. Uh, we have corn plantings out here, so that helps too. But bottom line is, whether it's access, screening a food plot, screening your wood line so you hold deer closer to the front there's a lot of options for you and a lot of these take a lot of sun so people say what, what do you have for screening i can plant in the shade well you can plant white pine white spruce in the shade and they'll grow an inch a year and after everything else around it dies that's casting shade they'll still be there spruce have been known to live over 200 years and white pines over 400 years that's why a lot of virgin timber up north and locations in the upper midwest were virgin white pines we want that to happen a little bit quicker though what can you plant or what can you create for a screen in a shaded area a berm berms work great a lot of times that's what you have to work with hard hinge cuts where you're cutting a lot of brush but you still need deer to be able to get in and out or critters anything that that's using that I want to talk about these conifers first. Conifers are great screen because they're more that mid time range for actual planting. Pines can grow an effective wall within five to six years, meaning red pine, it's a quick growing pine. Even scotch pine, when they're young, they hold those needles. And then when they're 10, 12 years old, they lose those needles and they lose those lower branches. So then that screen goes away, but you're just looking for those first five, six years. Spruce, for example, another great conifer I highly encourage. Now there's some discussion. People say we need to plant those 10, 12 feet apart. I highly disagree because typically when you're planting a screening wall, you're looking at that screening for 10, 15, 20 years out. You're establishing other screening on the inside. And at the same time, those branches on the sun side will always be there, even if they're clustered close together. Look at it, natural growth with white spruce up north or Norway spruce that have been planted 100 years ago. It's funny, Norway spruce weren't necessarily native, hence the name, but they're considered native now and even sold by a lot of um, nurseries and even conservation districts because they've been here so long. It's interesting, um, think about this, just a big picture, uh, philosophical um, thoughts running through your head is a lot of times yesterday's non-native yesterday's invasive is tomorrow's native something has been here 100 years or more and is always going to be here and i'm not saying that you don't try to take out an area of natives or non-natives uh, do whatever you want with it but um, it's really hard some of these are here to stay so it's, it's almost better to learn how to live with them and, and enjoy that diversity that's just a side note conifers right here though the spruce you can plant them five six feet apart they'll grow closer together staggered rows and that way they fill those holes. And you want them to fill those holes at year 10, 12, 15, and those outside branches that are facing the sun will stay there and grow really thick. That was great to have the neighbor, the neighboring farmer drive by, because it kind of shows you they've planted a conifer screen here. You see the, the longer spacing. These trees are, I would guess, and you could even count the growth right here, these trees are 12, 15 years old, somewhere around there, and could be as old as 20. We have, white spruce over here we have norway spruce right there we have scotch pine behind me we have white pine over there we have white cedar red cedars on the end over there and it looks like we even have a colorado blue spruce going but we have three different spruces we have two different pines and we have two different cedars along this wall and none of them are growing into each other yet you can still see this lower level you can see where the deer are hitting the white cedar down here you see where they're, they're eating that up on both those white cedars, on that white pine they've eaten. And then you can see what they're doing with the spruce here. They're not eating these lower limbs in the same location. Now, if you put this next to a food plot, they'd probably eat the spruce right here. The scotch pine grows very thin. It's not a very good screen once it gets a little bit older, and you can see that. Now, if we had something like that white spruce, 
like this Norway spruce, if they were planted five, six feet apart, this would be a wall right now. It would have accomplished your screen. Now I want to take this a step further. Conifers are great. Again, I encourage you playing them five to six foot spacing, staggered two rows. And you can use something like a quick growing pine that's appropriate for your area. Could be Austrian pine, red pine, scotch pine. You're just looking for that five, six year screening up to 10 years. Plant those staggered five to six feet apart. Again, this isn't a timber harvest. A lot of times the recommendations you see online are purely timber related. People learned them in school, they pass them on, it's forestry related, it has nothing to do with wildlife. Most of the timber recommendations you'll find out there coming from any certain individual, anybody, are not wildlife related. They're not the best for your goals if you have a wildlife in mind, and certainly that comes to screening. With conifers, they need to be spaced closely. You need to be mindful if they're Trees like these white cedar over here or white pine, if they're in a high deer traffic area, they're going to be eaten. I encourage you if you're planting trees out in the woods after logging, the tops are incredible because they're dead. You can plant those and stab those seedlings back there. They don't get any shade because it's a dead top and they're caged from deer. Perfect way to do so. If you're putting them out in the open like this, you need to just cage them and screen them until they get to an appropriate size. And then you might even find that they eat the lower branches. So conifers can be great. Pines, two rows, staggered. Spruce two rows staggered, what's appropriate in your area. And you can kind of see what happens with the white cedar and the red cedar. You see this white cedar right here? This is all browse pressure. All this, these lower limbs are all browse pressure. You can even see a rub on this. This is right by my pole building. That's what we're screening right in this location. We have white cedar over there that's closer to the fence. And then look at the white pine. This white pine right here has been hit really hard. And then you have this spruce that hasn't been hit hard. And then what's nice about red cedar is red cedar usually aren't hit very hard at all. So you have the white, the red cedar right here. Hasn't been hit. And then you have this white cedar right here. So I hope that clears some confusion with conifers, how you plant them, how you want to stagger them. And then let's take another look over here. We have two rows, alternate spacing. These are five feet apart and then they're staggered. These are silky willows. Within five to six years, they'll be 12 feet tall, 12 feet wide. And even this year, with the establishment of some of these silky willows that were established last year, they'll get into that three to four foot range and wide. That'll be some of the better growth. Some of the lower growth will be one to two foot wide. They're really just building that branch structure and then they'll take off next year so that by year three, we'll have these at four or five feet tall. And then at year five, we'll have them at 12 by 12. So let's go down here and look at these. Uh, pretty easy to do. We get our, our uh, shrub from Big Rock Trees and Tom Haas, his son Seth, they're right over there in their planting and they're putting the matting down, they're stabbing these cuttings in and really that's the most affordable, easiest way to plant and so I encourage you to check them out. The only bad thing is they, they're sold out this year already or they're really, really close. I think they have some hybrid uh, poplars left that Tom said. So their silky willows are nice because deer don't eat them. Now we found the rabbits nibble on them and that's partly my fault because we have a high rab rabbit population. We like our rabbit houses around here. I love seeing the rabbits, but they knew, knew nibble on them. But the destruction from a rabbit is far different than the incredibly destructive nature of deer and what they'll eat. So let's go take a look at some of the fresh cuttings they're putting in down here. And that's our second screening we're talking about. Now the shrubs are a little bit quicker. So you can see right here, they've stabbed these into the ground. And you can see some of the growth on these from last year. I'll show you this one right here, for example. This from last year, the upper stem got hit pretty hard. We had severe drought. And that branch structure is pretty big. So that one will be a big one this year. That'll probably be three feet. But bottom line is these shrubs within five years will create a 12 by 12 wall in this location. Now to us, that's not good enough. We have the conifers over here. I wouldn't plant conifers in this area because we don't need the height. Certainly if we had a power line here, the conifers wouldn't be appropriate either. That's where we might go to an honorable mention like miscanthus grass. If it was under conif or under power lines, miscanthus grass is, per is perfect. It's more expensive than the shrubs, more labor intensive for planting. You need to plant four or five rows, 12 to 18 inch spacing, and they're not that much cheaper than these, these shrub cuttings right here. So we'll have an incredible wall, these silky willows, actually hold their leaves well into the fall and they're perfect we're actually planting some today around some of our redneck blinds imagine that window is at about that 12 13 foot height and we'll have those shrubs growing around that that uh, redneck blind 
up to that height. Now you step over to here, doesn't look like much right now, but we have switchgrass right here that I've sprayed with Simazine. And after, I'll mow this in May here coming up in about a week. So I'll mow these weeds down that allow the switchgrass to grow. And you can see how the switchgrass is emerging already. This is old switchgrass right here. And then you can see the new switchgrass. This has just come in the last five days. That means that's grown probably in three days, about six inches. And what that means is in a month, we'll probably have three to four foot high switchgrass waving in the wind right here. Again, I'm gonna mow out some of these broadleafs so that sunlight gets right to the top of the switch. And so we have a screen of willows that takes place in about four to five years. We have the conifers over there that really fill in at year 10 to 12. And you can see it's, we're even uh, not filling in some, with some of those because they're white cedar, white pine, they get eaten really fast. Norway spruce can get picked on pretty hard too. And then we have that switch that by year two, we're already at four feet tall. And again, we only need five, six, seven feet here. So by the time we have the shrubs, by the time we have the switch grass, it's an impenetrable wall so people can't see into our land. And you can see our food plots right here. These are our home food plots where we hide, we hold deer. We have those, we own those woods back there. It's a half mile to the nearest woods around here. So if they're feeding on these food plots, they come from our woods. I don't care if they get here right at dark because that means they came from our land down in the woods right there. So. We have this switchgrass here. It came in really well last year. Um, you can see that new growth popping up again. Here's another cluster of switch right here. That switch was about two feet high last year. It'll be six, seven feet high this year. So think about those heights you need. Think about that switch will come in the fastest. Within two years, you have a pretty good screen at that five, six foot height. And then the conifers will give you the ultimate height in the future. Fairly inexpensive to plant seedlings. You just have to take care of them, keep the weeds off. And of course these shrubs are a great in-between where you get that thick 12 by 12. And you can kind of see here, let's go down here, just check out what Tom and Seth are doing. They're the owners of the uh, big rock trees. So it's really nice to have them out here. And I'll see, I'll see how I did on these heights. They do a lot of installs all around the Midwest. Um, even for some municipalities, they have several different varieties, including poplar, red or dogwood. And we're saying with the, uh, with the Soaky Willow, we're probably in that 12 by 12, 10 by 12 range in five to six years. Yeah, usually on the Soaky Willow, you got about an eight foot footprint. So with a double staggered row like this, you're gonna be about 12 feet wide total. Uh, anywhere from eight to 12 feet tall, just kind of depends on growing conditions. And if you if you take it down at all, you know, take out any thicker cuttings. And just for, you know, we're, we're talking about those three screens we talked about, the switchgrass, the conifers, and then I think the, the silky wools are beautiful because within five, six years, even probably four years, you have an effective wall. And then you can get that eight to 10 to 12 foot height uh, where switchgrass is a couple of years, more like five, six in two years, maybe six, seven in, in three years. And the conifers could take 10 to 12 years. So on your silky willows though, these are browse resistant and you guys sell um, hybrid willows, silky willows, dappler willow, is it dappled? Dappled willow. Dappled willow. And, uh, and then the poplars. And which of those are deer resistant? Basically just the silky. And you'll still see, they'll browse a little bit on it, but it's not real high on their list. You know, over the winter, uh, some installs we've done, you see some browsing. Uh, I don't think we have one here. There was one up on that end. You could see, you know, maybe it'll look something like this where uh, they got after some of the end uh, yes. of one. But overall, uh, we haven't protected them and they're doing very well. Well, um, good. Everything else we sell. Well, we get the rabbits hitting them too around here, but. And, and well, actually, unless the rabbits have a path directly through because we do have rabbits that sneak into the nursery. Yeah. They hit the hybrid willow first. This would be way low unless they have the path right next to a, a shrub. Now we're planting at a pretty ideal time right now. We had some good growth on last year, but last year these were installed end of June and that was really pushing it and we had drought and we still had some success with growth. We're planting right now, it's May 13th. And when is your, I mean, is this the perfect time, April? Yeah, you're like this zone down here, you probably, we would have shipped uh, maybe a week earlier. Okay, uh, for, so we're right, Yeah, we're, we're doing we're well. We're right on time and actually these two footers are going in really nice. Uh, so that means that we're ideal because the ground still has adequate moisture. We're able to push almost all of these right in. Okay. Typically on a two footer that, that gets pretty tough. Now, when would you use a hybrid poplar for screening versus a silky willow? Uh, if you need more height, um, then I'd and, go to a tree. And how close would you plant them? 
So uh, then the when you still willow, typic, or, uh, silky willow on the shrubs were typically every four feet in each okay. row. On the trees, I wouldn't go any closer than six feet. Okay. Just because you're not going to get get the height, you know. Um, so if we do a tree install only, we'll do a double staggered row, uh, four feet apart, and then six feet in each row. Okay. And stagger them with the trees. And you know, the hybrid poplar is mainly a, a single trunk. It grows more like a traditional tree big leaves about the size of your hand but they lose them in October right so if we're doing a screen more for guys looking for whitetail habitat improvement or that type of screening that lasts longer uh, we'll do a hybrid willow tree that's usually three main trunks mm -hmm. a lot more leaves and branchier down yes. low so you get that extra cover and a lot of times guys will do a, a hybrid willow tree with a silky willow right next to it yeah, that's kind of what we're doing here we have the silky willows and we have the switch and we don't need the the overall you know 20 feet of height here and right uh, exactly so yeah well i'll let you guys get back to work i All appreciate right, it good. and um so that's kind of a wrap for us with the the three different here you know the honorable mention you know would be the hybrid poplars is more of a tree so you don't get that overall screening effect also, the miscanthus grass is a great specialty screening. It's not good for all around. Like if you have long lengths, a half mile, and you only need six, seven feet, um, it's, it's overkill by times 100 as far as cost uh, to plant that miscanthus grass. But then these silky willows are a great blend of both. The switchgrass, the conifers. Uh, if you're under power lines, the miscanthus grass can be perfect because it's not going to grow into that power line. You don't have to worry about tree root. Egyptian wheat and uh, hybrid, uh, the HD screening, like John Comp sells the HD screening. There's Egyptian wheat out there. The HD screening uses gets, I've heard it get 20 feet tall in Kentucky, Ohio, but I think 10 to 13, 12 feet tall is a very reasonable explanation, but it's an annual. And so we're going to be planting some HD screening back here. We have a, a new food plot. We're using HD screening, corn. And we're clearing out a new area where there's an old trailer. We're throwing that away, getting it to the junkyard. And, uh, and so those are great temporary annual screens. And what we're talking about here are all perennials, meaning if you take care of them, they'll last decades instead of just that one year with the annual. And we don't have that, that extra work too. So conifers, willows, switchgrass. We have a lot of switchgrass on this property. I think I planted, uh, it'll end up being 39 pounds of switchgrass approximately six acres this year and we had another eight or nine acres on top of that we have a lot in uh, wisconsin too the willows i can't wait for because it's my home right here we're screening this this plot right here and the house and and traffic back here and uh and if you want to see all this if you're coming to our habitat event um the charity event on june 11th there's still some tickets available by the time you see this there might not be we have 41 maybe out of 50 tickets sold 300 dollars per person we provide lunch it's going to start at 10 o'clock but the parking will be right down here at the driveway. We had a great time last year. It's all for good calls. Every cent goes to Camp Kicking Bear, which is an uh, organization that simply, it's been around for a long time, but it gets a bow in a child's hand and tries to lead them to the outdoors. It's a great program. And then we have our hunt um, giveaway. So the hunt raffle is $100. We have 100 tickets. I know a lot of people are spending money to get two or three tickets at a time, which greatly increases our odds. But if you win that, like Leo did from uh, Lower Michigan last year, then uh, you can get out here too. But I uh, hope you enjoyed the screen for whitetails. And think about the fit, whether it's a type of conifer, the type of willow. And uh, always check out BigRockTrees.com. They have a great selection. They've narrowed it down to their five, six, seven best sellers, different sizes. A lot of planning instruction. They're really good guys. They can make sure you get it done right and at the right time. They're not going to sell you something in July just to make a buck. but they're already out by july anyways they're probably out by june this year so make sure to check them out especially check them out early next year and uh, get your favorite screening in for your whitetail hunt and your whitetail land for this fall folks i want to make sure you check out my web class video series whether it's how to design your food plot program or how to design your property in general. And we have a new one coming out that'll be how to hunt the rut. But these bucks back here are testament. Some of these bucks go back to 93. They're even in different states. I urge you to check out those web classes so that you can help yourself, help your land, help your hunt. The link is in the description. And also for those that have tried them out, I encourage you to offer some feedback in the comments below. Thank you.